Every single week, Hamster's Arcade Archives gets a new release of a classic arcade title from ages past, and more often than not, it's a shmup. So what's on tap this week? Is it cool enough to sink more time into? Is it fresh enough to do more than a credit feed? Is it worth our time, or will it end up being forgotten again? This week we have something I was hesitant to feature at first, but after a little deliberation, decided it was fair game. In this episode of Bullet Heaven, we're taking a look at Konami's Jailbreak. It's firmly shmub adjacent. And that's close enough for me. The warden has been taken hostage. Free him, no matter what the cost. Originally titled Manhattan 24th Precinct in Japan, Jailbreak was released to all territories in 1986 and brought to the Arcade Archives line on September 14th, 2023. Though it's classified as an action game by Hamster, it's pretty clear that Jailbreak is an early run and gunner, though with its own set of quirks. Let's take a closer look. I'm over here. The gameplay here is a little different than something you'd find in a game like Konami's own Contra, but the basics are still all here. Stages don't auto-scroll, getting hit by an enemy or shot will result in a one-hit kill, and the enemy opposition is surprisingly aggressive. The first thing that instantly differentiated Jailbreak from a lot of running gunners to me is its viewpoint. Not quite overhead, not quite side-scrolling, and not quarter view. Its angled perspective allows players to traverse the screen in eight directions, with aim locked to the direction travel. There does seem to be a slight auto-aim feature built into the weapons here, though, as the shots don't lock to the 45-degree norms of eight-way travel, so that's nice. Fire is not rapid, though options exist for 15, 20, and 30 hertz fire if tapping a button is a bit too laborious. Employing two fingers on fire while using my RAP5 Hayabusa can get me well over 15 shots per second playing quote-unquote purely, though. As a lone beat cop in Manhattan on a mission to save a kidnapped prison warden, various criminal opposition will approach from all sides to stop you at all costs. Thankfully, you're well-armed due to a seemingly unlimited shot count using just a revolver, but other weapons can also be obtained. Rescuing various civilian residents will subsequently grant rockets and a tear gas launcher as they're saved. With its two-button setup, Jailbreak allows players to cycle through these weapons from left to right using one input while firing with the other. It's efficient enough. These weapons have important uses. Barrels and vehicles are impervious to handgun and tear gas, but can be destroyed with rockets. Criminals in windows and other background areas can't be reached with handguns or rockets, but can be taken out with tear gas, which exhibit semi-homing properties when fired. The handgun is the fastest firing, making it the best for use against large crowds of criminals. It's a kind of mild rock-paper-scissors setup that I think works well enough, though it really isn't without its issues due to various hit detection concerns. Also, care is definitely needed with any of these weapons. Regardless of how many of them you've collected, if a resident is shot, all weapons will be lost and the cop will have only their handgun. Residents are placed in specific areas and should be able to be anticipated, but every now and again, specifically if the player takes too long to progress, a random resident will appear which can really mess things up when the bullets are flying. Played over the course of five looping stages, the difficulty in Jailbreak can neither be ignored nor understated. A ton of memorization and even a little strategy is going to be needed to get through this game. Most enemy spawns can be anticipated and even manipulated depending on the position the cop is in on screen. Usually, criminals will appear opposite the player. Again though, if you take too long to get a move on, random criminals will start appearing all over the place and it can get really easy to get completely overrun. Each stage is punctuated with a significant enemy contingent, often with many difficult to manage foes firing bullets all over the place. Without knowing what's ahead, it will be incredibly difficult to face this last wave. Random residents can also appear here, which has the potential to cripple the player's weaponry, though to be fair, the pistol is the best course of action for these sections of the stage. But even the stages proper are sometimes near impenetrable, and even with safe routing, which is possible, poor collision detection and slight differences in approach will lead to a BS death or 9. It's frustrating, to be absolutely sure, but there's that okay, just one more try factor to it all that gives Jailbreak way longer legs than it has any business having. On the topic of difficulty though, it turns out that the Western Jailbreak release defaults to hard difficulty while the Japanese Manhattan 24th Precinct is set to normal, like it should be. I don't know why it was deemed necessary to make the Western version harder than the Japanese version which was already plenty difficult, but here we are. And not only are there checkpoints, there's also no way to continue, meaning Game Over shoots you right back to the title screen. 
For many, the only way to get further and see more is using Hamster's limited save stating through the interrupt save system. It's a pretty helpful feature. It wasn't getting this footage anyway. While Jailbreak does support two players, it's not a co-op game, rather allowing two players to alternate independently between lives. A co-op system would have been great, but oh well, it is what it is. At any rate, even knowing full well I wasn't going to make very good progress, I went back into it just to spite the game. Of course, that might be because the Hamster ACA release once again comes in strong with great score chase incentives. The warden has been taken hostage. Free him, no matter what the cost. In addition to the base scoring for regular enemy destruction, Jailbreak also rewards the player with decent bonus points for various actions. Saving residents for one will grant anywhere from 500 to 2,000 points apiece, depending who's being rescued. Additionally, shooting barrels with rockets can sometimes reveal a rather buff-looking Batman sort of character, which rewards the player with 5,000 points. Using tear gas on enemies in windows and background sections will sometimes transform them into blonde women, resulting in 5,000 points. Keeping these scores in mind, getting the first extend at 30,000 points shouldn't be too far to the question in Stage 1 alone. It's an easy enough stage to route after all, and 40 to 50k can be achieved fairly easily. Further extends occur after every subsequent 70,000 points achieved. These extend scores can also be adjusted in the options menu if they're somehow too easy to achieve. Once again, both the main game and the included score attack mode with rigid gameplay settings, and the timed caravan mode all offer unique leaderboards, allowing even more casual players to see how they stack up worldwide, especially in the case of the 5-minute caravan. Jailbreak has a somewhat sparse presentation. It's visually good for 1986, though not on the level of, say, Gradius or Jackal, both of which saw release the same year, also from Konami. It has rather simple animation on everything, but also some decent sprite work, somewhat balancing out the visuals. On the topic of visuals, there's also a touch of censorship to this particular release, as enemies that turn into blonde women were actually topless in the original. Here, they sport a white t-shirt. I did also try playing on my Japanese account, and the t-shirt remained. What many games of the time have that Jailbreak doesn't is any sort of background music. It does have simple jingles at the start of and between stages, but other than that, all that plays are the not-so-great sound effects and the super-digitized voices. Simply put, I'm not exactly a fan. With all of that said, the typical ACA accoutrement is also present, with all kinds of visual filters, alternate title screens depending on the version chosen, and so forth. So, without any further ado, let's get into my final thoughts. Don't hit the water. You saved Manhattan. Going in, I wasn't too keen on the whole jailbreak experience, even knowing full well that it was still a running gunner. I can say after seeing pretty much everything it has to offer that I'm still not a fan. Its controls feel stiff and janky. Its challenge is on the wrong side of unfair with regards to weapon loss due to random residents. Its length isn't huge, only being about 15 minutes from start to finish on a clean run. And while it does have adequate minorly censored visuals, it has little in the way of decent sound. Simply put, it's not very fun, but for some reason though it constantly drew me back in a twisted masochistic way, taunting me to go further. I'm not sure how much mileage others might get out of a game like Jailbreak, but its online leaderboards do still give it a little more appeal than the base game has. Regardless, I think I've had my fill as it is. Well, it looks to me like Raiden 3 Cross Mikado Maniacs was the most popular choice of the three that I posted about in the last feature, so I went ahead and bought the Switch version as well. Gotta make some comparisons between it and PS4 after all. I'll follow up with Trouble Witch's final and then Eurokill. All kinds of neat shooters have also been announced, so it looks like I'll need a PS5 after all. Passage in Extreme seems like a thing we'll definitely need to play. And that does it for now. We'll see you all in the next episode.